Oh yeah, it's time to unveil my WR250R 3.0 Stealth Dual Sport. Let's go for a ride. You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. First off, before I unveil the bike, links to every single mod that I did on this bike my CBR 1000 RR and my Ducati X Diablo S is located at my website cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my mods and those are a list of links for all the mods I did on all three bikes uh, the updated mods I did on this bike for the 3.0 version I included in the description section of this video along with my website as well but anyways let's get right into it here guys BAM! BAM! Oh uh, yeah! WR250R 3.0 still, baby! Check it out! The biggest modification on this bike is I have the Go Race suspension! That's what makes this the 3.0 version more than anything, guys. I upgraded the suspension. So, as you guys know, the WR250R comes with suspension that allows you to upgrade to way better suspension. All right, Cycle Cruiser, this is your shock. I'm getting ready to take it apart. I just let the nitrogen out of the shock, and I'm going to remove the compression adjuster and show you how much air is still inside the shock. Look at that foamy, nasty, frothy mess. This is your bladder. This is your shock shaft with your seal head and your stock base valve. That's all the stuff that we're going to replace right there, all that stuff. So what we have here is a completely disassembled shock. We have on the left side the stock stuff. We've got the stock bladder, stock bump rubber, cap, seal head, uh, compression stack, base valve assembly, rebound. Over here we have the aftermarket much improved bladder, much improved bump rubber, the much improved base valve or shock shaft assembly, um, seal head assembly, sorry. Compression stack, super trick Belgian base valve, high flow, better sealing base valve assembly, rebound stack. And those are the insides, that's the guts. That's what makes the magic happen. Go check them out, GoRace.com. Those guys are awesome. Man, they the turnaround time was so fast. By the way, I did a video to show you how to take suspension off and box it up. And I sent them out to Go Race in Virginia. I'll include a video link in the description and comment section of this video to show you how to take take suspension off and box it up and send it off. But man, the turnaround time was like, like in two business days, guys. Super fast. And I have yet to ride the bike to see the difference. I'll do a follow-up video to this and give you a, a review on the, the Go Race suspension and tell you how. Seal savers here that I added here. This protects the seals on the bike. Everybody tells me that they're awesome and that they will allow, allow you to keep your seals for a long time. We'll see how it works out. As you can see, the most noticeable change are the new black OEM plastics and this awesome new Acherbis headlight that has auxiliary LED lights in here for better visibility. Not only does this headlight look much cooler and make this bike look more modern looking than the OEM headlight, but it's lighter in weight and it's not made of glass like the OEM headlight, so you don't have to worry about a rock shooting up and cracking the glass like the OEM headlight. But what I really love are the auxiliary LED lights, which by the way, I do have a Cyclops LED light bulb in there, which has been amazing, which I've had for a while now. Uh, but these auxiliary LED lights here, which provide much more visibility, especially at night, uh, are switched on by a switch here that I've integrated in my Stealth Pro Taper bar pad. As you guys know, like on my previous version, I, I like to integrate my controls into the bar pad. And here's the switch for the auxiliary LED lights. Here's uh, a voltmeter here with a switch, 
which tells me the power of my new uh, anti-gravity restart lithium ion battery that is not only 50% lighter than my previous ballistic lithium ion battery, uh, but it has nearly double the amp hours at like seven point something amp hours versus four point something amp hours. And But the best thing about it is that it's, it has smart technology that if it recognizes the power level is going super low, it will shut off and leave you with just enough power to press a button on top of the battery that will give you power to restart the bike. So you'll never have to be worried about being stranded because of a dead battery which is amazing. Uh, the other control I have on here is a two power switch for grip heaters for the wintertime riding, which has been amazing. And I have these new gel grips, by the way, which are great. And I have a, a power commander two map switch here, uh, which I had done on the previous version uh, because I have, uh, you know, I have the, the FMF Q4 exhaust with the mega bomb header, but I have a modified air box door which I hollowed out the uh, OEM door and I put just an air condition filter behind it so that allows much more airflow but without a lot of debris going into the box and I have a dyno tune map that was done on the dyno custom for that but when I go into the woods and I want to head through water all I need to do is put the OEM, take out this OEM door that I have in this Krieger pack along with some tools I have in there. By the way, this Krieger pack is awesome. And put the OEM door on, flip the switch, and it'll be custom for the stock door. So, because obviously less air will be coming through, and it'll be perfectly tuned for that. So, uh, and the, it, the, the performance has been absolutely awesome compared to stock. I uh, have a custom seat this is the uh, seat concept seat the low seat height i'm telling you guys if you get this bike you're gonna have to get a, a premium seat because it's the the oem seat is so uncomfortable it's like sitting on wood and that has been amazing upgraded to a three gallon tank if you're gonna do any performance modifications this bike you definitely have to upgrade to at least a three gallon tank these are zeta hand guards which have been amazing no problems with the new uh, I have these Zeta hand guard covers here in black with the integrated turn signals in smoke. As you can see, it doesn't look like I have turn signals on, but when I turn them on, they're really bright here, integrated. Um, I have the hand guard mirrors here, which fold up, as a lot of you guys seen on the previous version, which have proved to be amazing. They're awesome for me, very inexpensive, easy to install. Uh, I've got the DRC fender eliminator, eliminator kit from the previous version with the smoke turn signals here and the rear brake light uh, which has uh, proved to be fantastic no problems um, I meant to mention as far as the decals on the bike I have uh, carbon fiber Yamaha decals here uh, in the tribal Yamaha uh, tribal decal here in carbon fiber so it gives it the stealth look and more of an OEM look you know, I, I was going to go with like a custom graphics package, but I didn't want the, all the loud colors and crazy into, you know, uh, advertising for companies and stuff like that. I'm not really into that. I like low key, stealth, clean look. And also, I have you know, from the previous version, you know, I have these Chinese fold up levers here and uh, they I've had no problems with Chinese levers. I have them on my CBR 1000 RR too. I've never had an issue with them. You guys pay all that money for them expensive ones. It's unnecessary, guys. These, these have been fantastic. The biggest modification on the bike besides the suspension are the custom wheels that you guys saw in a previous video. These are the DID STX Dirt Star rims, which are supposed to be the best, one of the best uh, and hardest rims that you can buy that can really are very super durable. Uh, and I had some, uh, the Hubs custom powder coated black, those are OEM and I bought them brand new because I wanted a second set of wheels because my OEM wheels are over here and I'll be using these for dirt only and I'll be using tire balls in these. I have uh, D606 tires uh, front and rear and I have IRC heavy duty tubes. Uh, which I've used since I've had this bike, guys. Those tubes are amazing. I've never had a flat of any kind uh, with those IRC heavy-duty tubes. I have the Bulldog black spokes that were powder-coated uh, gloss black as well. And these gold nipples here, which uh, add to the look, of course, with this new stealth sprocket that I have. A uh, hybrid sprocket that uh, 
Uh, it's aluminum in the middle and steel on the out, outer portion, which uh, it'll last just as long as a steel sprocket, but much lighter in weight. This is a 47 tooth sprocket, by the way, and this is a new uh, DID narrow uh, enduro uh, X ring uh, chain, which is lighter in weight than the previous Renthal gold chain that I had. And I, I have a uh, what you call an ultralight sprocket here. Thir this is 13 inch, which is the OEM size, but it's, it's lighter in weight and it also expels dirt. Um, and another thing I have custom Sandman counter sprocket cover and tail, excuse me, and case saver, which you can't really see, it's behind there. So if the chain were to snap, it protects the case from getting damaged. Um, and also I have the Sandman uh, chain guard here, which absolutely looks so much better than the stock one. And, uh, but I tell you guys, go check out Sandman Parts. I'll include a link to his website. And he makes these custom for the WR250R. He is a WR250R enthusiast from my understanding. Uh, but the reason why you want to go with this sprocket cover and this case saver is because the OEM sprocket uh, uh, collects a lot of mud. And you, every time you wash a bike, you're going to have to take that, that uh, counter sprocket cover off and it's just caked in mud. It's, it's an irritation. Uh, so this is actually lighter weight as well, so you're going to save a little bit of weight. Uh, and also I have the driven uh, shift lever here, folding shift lever, which is much lighter weight than the stock one. It looks a lot better as well. Um, this is a Sandman uh, case pad here as well, shift pad cover. Uh, like I said, go check them out. Sandman parts makes absolutely amazing custom stuff here for this WR250R. Go check them out. Uh, I have the Moose Racing skid plate, which I switched over. I had a Flatlands aluminum skid plate. This is so much lighter in weight. Looks cool and black. Um, we'll see how durable it is. From my understanding, everybody said it's really durable. Uh, I have the upgraded, uh, what you call it, horn here. This is a bigger horn, and it has a cover here that I uh, plastic dipped black. Uh, so it's a little bit louder than stock, but I love the cover too, so that if you get a lot of rocks or debris to head up there, it's not going to damage the horn. Um, uh, previously, I had a, a Pirelli MT21 tire, front tire, and the D606 rear. This time I decided to go all D606 and see how it works, uh, you know, dual sporting, like I do, you know, urban fukuri riding that I like to do. So we'll see how that all pans out. I did put the tires and tubes on myself. In the future, I will do a DIY video to show you how to do it the easy way. I have a speedo healer on here, by the way, which corrects the speed on the speedometer. But I also I forgot to mention, I have a DRC a wide foot pegs here, which are way better than stock, man. They're much more durable and they're more comfortable more than anything. And I upgraded the brake pads as well to uh, SBC. Uh, brake pads double h brake pads so much better premium brake pads and also i added this tm designs uh, brake disc guard here definitely want to put a brake disc guard guys you're going over logs and objects and whatnot it can damage your disc and cause it to warp this you definitely want to get this and this is made specifically for the wr250r like i said links to everything are in the description and comment section uh, of this video. Also, by the way, I want to mention I do have this wired for a GPS here, as you can see, and that's so it uh, the power's on with the bike and cuts off with the bike. Also, I have the radiator guard here from the previous version. Definitely want to get a radiator guard, guys. If you crash, knock your bike down a few times, man. If it knocks that that radiator and you have coolant coming out, it can be a mess, and then your bike can overheat if you're riding with it to go back home or whatnot. Uh, this has proved to be absolutely amazing to help make this bike bulletproof. Oh boy, I tell you, I know I got some more stuff in this bike. I, <laughs> I got so much stuff in this bike, it's crazy, man. I think the 4.0 version, I'll probably do the big bore kit and have engine work done maybe and take it up to three, 300, 310 cc's, uh, which I see some of you guys doing. I may or may not do that, I don't know. And a lot of you guys are saying, Psycho Cruiser, man, why don't you... Uh, just go ahead and get you like a KTM 500 EXC with, I mean, that's the amount of money you put into this, you could have bought a KTM EXC, no problem. And you would have way more power, guy. But you know what? 
you know what why there's a cult following for this bike is because this bike is uh such low maintenance man you a lot of you guys keep talking about you know the street legal dirt bikes the ktm 500 exe is a street legal dirt bike so that you will be doing valve adjustments rated in hours like every 15 every 30 hours at least and doing oil changes every two three hundred miles this bike you do valve adjustments every 27,000 miles and they have uh you know the the valves on here rarely go out of spec i've never heard anybody have valves that went out of spec on their wr2 vr basically you don't even have to do a valve adjustment on this bike basically I doubt even after 27,500, the valves will move at all. At least people that I know that uh, had this bike over 50,000 miles, the valves have never moved. Oil changes every 3,000 miles. You take a lot of the crap off the bike, which I took, um, I tell you, I took off this helmet lock that was on here to save some weight. And a lot of these parts, aluminum parts and stuff I put on the bike and other parts I took off this bike. You can get this bike down to at least, I don't know, I'm going to weigh my bike at some point. We'll see what it weighs, but I'm sure it's probably at least, you know, like 290 and maybe you can get it down. You can get it down to probably 285 pounds, which a lot of you still say it's um, heavy at 285 pounds. But you know what, guys? This engine designed to hold more oil, so you can ride on the highway all day, vibe-free, no vibrations on the highway. You can do some lightweight adventure riding on this bike. I mean, you, you can do the Trans-American Trail on this bike. Parts are easy to come by. This bike is like ultra reliable, man. People will tell you guys, many people out there got over 100,000 miles on the WR250R with no top-end rebuild that you have to do on those dirt bikes. Just for those of you guys that want to do a little bit of everything, you know, but it may not be the the greatest at any one thing, but it will do a little bit of everything like a Swiss Army knife. They, that's why they call it the Swiss Army knife of motorcycles, because it can be a, a little bit of everything and very little maintenance and super reliable. Parts are easy to come by and cheap, cheap to ensure. I have more fun on this bike than I do my Ducati X Diablo S and CBR 1000 RR because all I can do is go fast on the road on this or take this to the track. This, I can do everything. I can take it I can, with this new upgraded suspension. I can take it, do a little bit of a motocross track action. I can take it, do single track action. I can take it on long highway rides. I can adventure across the, the country and the world on this bike. Um, I can ride up staircases, do some urban effery do some uh do some slide action on this bike i can do it all on this bike man i love it guys i absolutely and a lot of you guys say it's some of you say may say it's hey it's underpowered a bit you do some modifications to the bike guys you you can get the power up there you do the big bore kit on there you can bump that power up um but in my opinion for me it's more than enough power for me man i love it out there and i got you see i got two liter bikes here guys these are beasts uh, we're talking 1,262cc Tesla Strata L-Twin Ducati, the new engine on this rate, this bad boy. Fast off the line. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Ah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, guys. Right here, CBR 1000 RR 1000cc engine, man. <laughs> cc i have more fun on this bike man i tell you i get rid of these bikes before i get rid of this one that's why i put so much money in this bike man i love this bike and if, if i tell you if this somewhere to have in this bike i'm gonna get another one i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do the same mods to it guys in my opinion better than the drz 400 which is awesome bike as well but it's it's oh it's outdated the drz 400 man you got carburetor five gears on there it looks out severely outdated it's like 25 pounds heavier yeah you get some more power but you got more weight you got five gears only you know what i'm saying a carburetor to deal with which some of you guys may like i live in ohio i don't like dealing with carburetors here in cold weather you know what i'm saying drz 400 awesome bike i'm not hating on it in my opinion, for me and my preferences, I love the WR250R. That's just me, guys. You know what I'm saying? I can get any bike I want to, um, but I choose the WR250R. 
And uh, I'm not hating on any of the street legal dirt bikes either. I probably want to add one of those maybe in the future. You know what I'm saying? But this bike is staying. But hey guys, for those of you guys who want to get my gear, you know, my camel pants, my boots, my helmet, gloves, all of my stuff, I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos or go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, my gear. And those are current links to all of my stuff, my gear, everything. And for those of you who want to get all the mods to my bike, like I mentioned earlier, uh, click on my mods. And those are current links for all the mods on all three of my bikes. And if you want to see more of my videos, click on the menu tab, my videos. And those are a bunch of playlists with my over 1,200 plus videos categorized into those playlists to make it easier for you to navigate through and find what you're looking for. Hey, hit thumbs up. What do you think, man? Thumbs up if you like this bike. Tell me, what else should I do to the bike? Maybe should I go that big bore route and do some engine work on it or what, man? Bump up the power a little bit? What, what do you guys think, man? Let's talk about it. And uh, hey, subscribe to my All In One Motorcycle channel and also go check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto. Showcase is a van that I customize for cheap that allows me to live in my van with my motorcycle anywhere and has a ton of cool mods. And that channel has everything from build videos, trip videos, uh, anything and everything bug out moto as a courtesy I included two video playlists one for new riders and those are all of the videos I've done over the years that I feel are helpful for new riders and also my popular videos playlist hey hit the subscribe button I appreciate it take care